So in this acid-base titration, we're going to be using phenolphthalein as our indicator. And most of the stuff you're normally told in your lab procedure. But the reason I'm making a note of it is because that will determine which of our two solutions we will use as our titrant to go in our burette and which one we will use as our sample to go in our flask. So the reason that is is because phenolphthalein is an indicator that is colorless in an acid but it turns pink or red in a base, in a strong base. So we want our solution to start colorless. It's hard to do a titration where your sample starts colorful and you're looking for exactly the drop that turns it colorless. That's really difficult to do. It's easy if it's colorless and it turns a color. So that means that our acid has to go in our sample so that it will be colorless to start off with and it will turn a color when we add enough base to it. So let's start with that. We have to put acid as our sample. So we're gonna have 10 milliliters of acid and we're gonna start off by making three samples because we always do at least three trials of a titration. We may need to do more if we can't get a consistent result after the first three. So there's a couple of things to note here in terms of procedure. I'm gonna start with pouring a little bit of my KHP into a clean beaker. And I'm also gonna have a waste beaker handy where I'm just gonna put discarded solutions. And I am going to start with getting this uh, pipette about a third or halfway full with some KHP. And we are doing what is called sheeting. So I'm going to roll around this half full pipette and I'm gonna cover the inside with KHP. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it even higher. I'm just gonna pull it all the way up to the line so that I can get that coated. And the reason for this is we don't know what was last in this pipette. And we wanna make sure it's perfectly clean, that there's no <coughs> residue in there that could react with our acid. So by sheeting it, we're making sure that anything that will react has reacted. Any droplets or anything in there are KHP solution. So for example, even the little bit that's left in the tip, we now know that's KHP solution. We have dipped the tip in a small sample of KHP before we dip it into our volumetric flask, which has pure solution in it. So now we are ready to actually titrate 10 mil samples. Remember not to let your solution go up into your pipette bulb. And we're gonna let it go down just until it's at the line. Might be a little difficult to see on the video. And once we are there, that will be transferred to one of our Erlenmeyer flasks. And remember, we do not blow out a pipette. They are calibrated to deliver. So now we have 10.0 mils, as precise as our pipette is in our first flask. And this being precise with our pipetting is very important. If we have inaccurate amounts in each flask, there's no way we'll be accurate or we'll be able to get consistent results in our titration. We're gonna end up having to do more than we would like to do. So we're just gonna pipette all three um, exactly the same way. So my samples are ready. I'm going to set that solution aside and I'm going to add one or two drops of phenolphthalein indicator to each one. It's important not to add too much indicator. One or two drops is sufficient to see the color change and what actually happens is your indicator, in order to turn color, it actually reacts. So if you add too much, you're actually reacting with too much of your acid and base solution. So I'm gonna just try to keep it consistent and here I have two drops in every one. Next, I need to sheet my burette also. So just the way we sheeted the pipette and for the same reasons to eliminate any impurities, we're going to sheet the burette. So here's a burette, stopcock is closed and I'm going to put maybe 10 mils of my sodium hydroxide in it 
and then I will be able to swirl it around, kind of sheet the whole thing, and discard it as waste. So I'm going to start with inverting my sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide solution, and I'm going to transfer some to a separate beaker that I'll be that'll be a little handier for filling my burettes. And I'm actually going to grab a dry funnel because remember if I have extra water anywhere, it's changing my concentrations of things. So a clean dry funnel for my sodium hydroxide. Stop cock is closed. That would be plenty. And waste beaker handy. So I want to sort of not throw my funnel around, but I want to sheet. So I'm going to roll it around, let some come out the, the top while I'm rolling it, and certainly let some come out the tip. And that's a slower process than I want it to be, so I'm going to just dump the rest out this way. waste beaker here. It's a good idea to label your beaker so you don't forget which one is which. I am going to now fill my burettes and the biggest thing to watch for is that you don't go over the zero line. It fills faster than you think because it's really narrow. And one last step in the tip is still material that should actually belong in my waste beaker because that was from sheeting it. So I'm going to let some flow through the tip so that that all gets washed out into my waste beaker. Again, this one is waste. And this one is potassium hydroxide, okay? Now I have close to 50 mils in here, um, but we are ready to titrate. So I can put a, one of my samples underneath there. And a quick note here about reading your burette. So burettes are, are graduated from the top down. So you'll notice the top mark is zero and it increases on the way down. So be careful when you're reading them. Uh, you can see we're at uh, about two and a half here. It's the bottom of the meniscus is about 2.6 and we should be able to estimate one decimal place in between our graduations. So since it is directly on that line, or maybe slightly above, I'm going to say 2.59 is what I estimate the volume that we have in the burette right now. So you may be wondering why I didn't fill it all the way exactly to zero, and the answer is it really doesn't matter. As long as we know exactly where it is now, we're going to use some in this reaction to titrate uh, this sample, and the difference between our two readings is going to be the, the amount that we use. So it doesn't matter if we start at zero. It doesn't matter that we record it. So I've started a little table here on my observations that the initial volume for trial one was 2.59 milliliters.